So first I'm going to start, and I see your dinosaur book. Oh, that's an encyclopedia of dinosaurs. Nice choice. That's very good. That's a good book. That's a very good book. Um, first, let me explain something about dinosaurs. There are really two kinds. There are two kinds of dinosaurs. And I know that sounds weird because you might think, does that mean plant eater or meat eater? No, actually what it means is there's a group called avian dinosaurs, which are birds. And then there's a group called terrestrial dinosaurs. Those are the dinosaurs that lived on land. Birds are dinosaurs. If you've ever seen a bird, you've seen a dinosaur. Birds are dinosaurs. Now, I know it sounds a little crazy, but let me explain why. When we look at the bones of a, of a bird, they're just like the bones of meat-eating dinosaurs. So scientists finally figured out, hey, why don't we just call birds dinosaurs? Because they are. So there's one group called the avian dinosaurs. That means the birds. The other group is called the terrestrial dinosaur. That's all the rest of them. Terrestrial dinosaurs are not here anymore. They became extinct. But the avian dinosaurs are still with us. So if you've seen a bird, you've seen a dinosaur. If you've ever eaten a chicken nugget, then you've eaten a dinosaur nugget. Yeah, you ate dinosaur meat. If you've ever been to uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you went to Kentucky Fried Dinosaur. Because birds are dinosaurs. The ones we're going to learn about today, and by the way, if you've ever seen an eagle or an owl, or a hawk, or even a hummingbird, you have seen a dinosaur. Hummingbirds are the smallest dinosaurs that ever lived. Yeah, hummingbirds are dinosaurs. So the ones we're going to learn about today are the ones called terrestrial dinosaurs. Those are the ones that, those are, the ones that are no longer here. They are extinct. Now, there's certain rules. To be a terrestrial dinosaur, there's certain rules. Here are the rules. Rule number one, you had to live on land. Rule number two, you had to live at a time called the Mesozoic Era. The Mesozoic Era. That's when terrestrial dinosaurs were alive. The Mesozoic Era is broken into three different periods. Can any of you pronounce the name of one of those periods? Can somebody raise your hand if you think you can pronounce the name of it? Let's see. Henry, can you tell me what is the name of one of those periods? Jurassic period. At a boy, nicely done. Jurassic period is correct. Mr. Gardner, can you tell me one of those periods? Do you know how to? There you go. Triassic. Nicely done. Triassic is another one. You guys are great. So Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Those are the time periods when terrestrial dinosaurs were alive. So that's rule number two. You had to live on land. You had to live in the Mesozoic era. Rule number three, most important rule, it's your legs. Your legs. Yes, I said your legs. Look, dinosaur legs go straight up and down under their skeleton. A reptile's legs stick out to the side. You see, a dinosaur's legs go straight up and down. Their cousins, the reptiles, their legs stick out to the side. So a frog is not a dinosaur because its legs stick out to the side. A crocodile is not a dinosaur because legs are out to the side. A lizard is not a dinosaur because legs are out to the side. My grandfather is not a dinosaur. Wait, my forget the grandfather part. Forget the grandfather part. Let's talk about footprints. Look, the ones on the top are from a dinosaur. Do you see how close the feet are together? The tracks on the bottom are from a crocodile. Its legs are out to the side. Yes, Henry? Also, they're way bigger. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah, T yeah, absolutely. Those dinosaur footprints are way bigger. 
But the crocodile's footprints are farther apart because its legs are out to the side. Also, do you see that squiggly line between the footprints of the crocodile? Do either of you know what that is? What do you think that is? Can somebody tell me what that squiggly line is? Henry, what is it? Tail. Atta boy, the tail. Dinosaurs do not drag their tails because their tummy is up off the ground. But because a reptile's legs are out to the side, its tummy and tail are closer to the ground. That means when a reptile walks, it drags its tail. When a terrestrial dinosaur walks, it does not. So here are the rules. You got to live on land. Legs have to be underneath you. And you had to live in the Mesozoic era. Here is one more rule. Yes, Mr. Gardner, what would you like to say, buddy? Hang on, can you unmute? Hang on just a second, can you do it? Can you do it? You did it before. Can you unmute again? Try one more time. There you go, you brought in your helper. Some reptiles live in the water and don't even come on land. That's right, that's exactly right. Nicely done. So, another rule to be a dinosaur is you lay eggs. How many of you would like to eat a dinosaur egg for breakfast? Raise your hand. A chicken is a bird. A bird is a dinosaur. So if you've ever eaten a chicken egg, you've eaten a dinosaur egg. Yeah. If you like chicken nuggets, you like dinosaur nuggets. So when you ask your, when you ask your mom or dad tonight, uh, can we please have dinosaur meat for dinner? And your parents will go, uh, child, what are you talking about? I'm just talking about chicken because the chicken is a bird and the bird is a dinosaur. So dinosaurs lay eggs. Now there's two shapes of dinosaur eggs, round eggs and long eggs. If your dinosaur egg is round, it is from a plant eater. If a dinosaur egg is long, it's from a meat eater. Here's a challenge. I'm gonna show you a dinosaur egg. If you think this is from a plant eater, give me a thumbs down. If you think what I'm gonna show you is from a meat eater, give me a thumbs up. See if you can remember the shapes. Look at the shape. Meat eater, if you, if, thumbs up if you think it's a meat eater, thumbs down if you think it's a plant eater. All three of you got it absolutely correct. It is from a meat eater. It is a meat eater. Yes, Henry. Is that a real egg? It's a raptor egg, yes. Yes, it is from a raptor. My sister likes raptor. Oh, raptors are amazing dinosaurs. We're gonna talk about raptors in just a minute. They are amazing. So, eggs. Listen, there's two kinds of nests. Big dinosaurs built a nest on the ground, laid their eggs in it, and then covered them with leaves. Small dinosaurs built a nest on the ground, they laid their eggs, but then they sat on the eggs to keep them warm. How come the big dinosaurs didn't sit on their eggs? Who can tell me? How come big dinosaur didn't sit on its eggs? Mr. Gardner, why do you think? It's too heavy. There you go. If mom sat on her eggs, the babies would become pancakeosauruses. And you don't want to be a pancakeosaurus if you're a dinosaur. Can you imagine a big dinosaur sits on her eggs? <laughs> My babies. So the big dinosaurs did not sit on their eggs. They covered them with leaves. The smaller ones could because they don't break the nest. Now, here are the rules. Let's remember the rules. You have to live on land. You live in the Mesozoic era. Your legs go straight up and down and you lay eggs. Here's some animals that lived with the dinosaurs, but are not dinosaurs. First, Mr. Gardner, what would you like to say, buddy? The little dinosaurs sit on their eggs. It's because they're more light. Correct. a boy. Nicely done. You are correct, sir. It's because they are light. All right. This is an animal called a mosasaur. These 
are not dinosaurs. These are cousins of dinosaurs. How come they're not a dinosaur? Because they live in the water and their flippers are out to the side. Even though they're flippers, they still count as legs, they're out to the side. So these animals are not dinosaurs. They are cousins of dinosaurs. Next, this is the most confusing. Pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. They lived with the dinosaurs, but they are not dinosaurs. And they're not birds. They are cousins of lizards. They are flying reptiles, not dinosaurs. Well, wait a minute. How come I said birds are dinosaurs, but pterosaurs are not? You want to know why? It's because their legs stick out to the side when they're standing on the ground. When you see a picture of them, their, their arms are always out to their side because they're flying. But when they walk, their arms and legs stick out to the side. Look at the bird in that picture. He's on the left. His legs go straight up and down. Pterodactyls stick out to the side. Yes, Mr. Gardner. Well, the one that had the sticky outy legs uh -huh. was the Quetzalcoatlus. Yeah, Quetzalcoatlus is exactly. And by the way, I think, Mr. Gardner, you can just leave your microphone unmuted. I, I can mute you on my end, but I think if you leave it unmuted, let me test it. No, nah, you'd still have to do it. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it easier for you. Uh, let me do this. Let me change the settings so that if you guys want to unmute yourself when you ask a question, you can do it. So now, if you want to ask a question, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question right away. All right. So, pterosaurs are not dinosaurs because their legs are out to the side. So here comes your first challenge. So it's going to be hard. I'm going to show you six animals. I want you to look at the Look at the pictures and then show me with your fingers how many of these animals you think are dinosaurs. If you think there's only one dinosaur in the picture, you'll show me one finger. If you think it's two, three, four, five, woohoo, or six, here we go. Try to remember the rules. Look at the picture and tell me. How many dinosaurs do you see in this picture? Henry says two. Henry's lovely wife says two. Is that your wife? She's beautiful. Congratulations, sir. I'm so happy for you kids. Congratulations. And Mr. Gardner says two, and you are all correct. There are two dinosaurs in this picture. Who can tell me which one of the, tell me one of the dinosaurs you see. Who can tell me one? Henry, what's one of the ones you saw? Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus. Good job. And, and did your sister, did you see a different one or did you see Brachiosaurus? Different. Which one? The bird. the bird is the other one. Good job, you guys. There are two dinosaurs in this picture. There is a hummingbird, which is a dinosaur, and the Brachiosaurus on the bottom. He's a dinosaur. The other ones are not dinosaurs. They're not dinosaurs how crazy is that all right now you know what is and is not a dinosaur now let's take a look at some of the families of dinosaurs we'll start with ones called hadrosaurs we also call these animals duck billed dinosaurs they are plant eaters here is the head of a baby duck bill see its flat beak that's why we call it a duck bill this is the head of a baby duckbill. Henry, what is your question, buddy? Also, have you seen the movie Jurassic Park? I did, yeah. Did you it like it? It has lots of dinosaurs, too. Oh, it does. Yeah, it has a bunch. I like it a lot. I've always liked that movie. It's, I think it's very cool. So the duckbills are plant eaters. Very nice animals. Probably wouldn't bother anybody because they're perfectly harmless. 
Now it has a cousin called Parasaurolophus that has a long tube on its head. We call that a crest. Do you guys know what that crest is used for? What is that crest for? Does anybody know? Can you guys figure it out? And Shane, if you would like to send in your answers through chat, you can do that. Shane, if you'd like to participate in the questions and answers. Um, yes, Mr. Gardner. To contact with each other. There you go, Atta boy. That's exactly correct. I see you have a, you have a. Uh, a parasaurial office. Yeah, Atta boy. That's right. They use those to communicate with each other. That is used to make sound. That tube is used to make sound. Nicely done. Very good. Now, how does it make sound? I'll show you. I'll use just a piece of paper. Let me show you what it does. That long tube. When you blow air, doesn't make any noise. But when air travels through a tube, it does. Listen. <laughs> that might be how Parasaurolophus used its head. Hi, Shane. Glad you joined us, buddy. It used its head to make sound. That's what it was for, to communicate with each other. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, let's talk about the Ceratopsians, the horned dinosaurs. Who knows the name of that one? What is its name? Go ahead, Mr. Gardner. Triceratops. Nicely done. You said tritator tots. Good. Tritator tots? Did somebody say tritator tots? No. It's triceratops, and you're right. Here's the horn of a baby triceratops. That's a baby. Moms and dads, their horns were so gigantic, you can't even imagine the size of those. Uh, yes, Henry. There's also different types of triceratops. Like they're in the um, same family. That's exactly right. a boy, you're exactly right. There are different members of their family. The one on the top left is Pachyrhinosaurus. The one in the middle is, I think that's Ineosaurus. Then, then uh, who else is there? Um, 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 Taurosaurus, Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, and of course, the biggest one of all, Triceratops. Yes, Mr. Gardner. I have three dinosaurs, but I just don't know where my triceratop is. Well, that's okay. It's probably in the backyard eating grass. It's a plant eater, you know. So Do you it's have lots of dinosaurs? Do you? Good job. Very good. I well, that's right. You can get them if you want to show them to me. Triceratops is the largest member of the Ceratopsin family. It just happens to be the biggest. Who is this dinosaur? Who is it? Who is it, Henry's sister? Stegosaurus. Nicely done. It is Stegosaurus. You are correct. Now look at the tail of Stegosaurus. What are those things on the tail called? Who can tell me? What are they called? What is it, Mr. Gardner? What are those pointy things on the tail called? Do you know? Spikes. Spikes, attaboy. Spikes. Oh, wow, Henry, you guys do have a bunch of them. Ooh, very nice. Is that very onyx? That's very cool. Hey, Shane, you've got a good one, too. That looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then there is a raptor. Ooh. It's an Indoraptor. Nice. Very cool, you guys. Very cool. Stegosaurus has spikes on its tail. Here is the spike from the tail of a Stegosaurus. This is its weapon. It's what it uses as a way to protect itself. If you were a plant eater, you had to have protection, right? You have to be protected. And so Stegosaurus used those, the tail spikes. These are the best protected dinosaurs that ever lived. These are like an army tank. They are the most well-protected. They are called ankylosaurs. 
ankylosaurs. Mr. Gardner, I thought I saw you had an ankylosaur. Oh, there you go, Henry. You've got one. You got two anky three ankylosaurs. And there's oh, another yeah. one. At a boy, Henry. That's a good one. Good job, Mr. Gardner. That's an excellent one, too. Very good, you guys. Ankylosaurs are the most well protected. There are not many dinosaurs that would mess around with a full-grown ankylosaur. They just simply have too many weapons. Yes, Mr. Gardner. Well, since they have so many armor, they just stay like where they are a lot of times because they can whack with their very strong tail clubs. Good job. Absolutely. Yes, Henry. Well, if, if maybe some the ears, like if they want to eat them, sometimes they can tip over them like to their belly where they can bite. And you know eat. what? That would probably be the only way you could kill one of these is to flip it over on its back. The problem is that these animals weigh like nine tons. So animals weren't strong enough to flip them over. They weren't strong enough to do that. Yes, Mr. Gardner. My book tells me how many tons there is. Nice. Atta boy. Atta boy. Very exciting. I'm glad to hear that. That's a good book. That's a very good book. All right. Let's look at the biggest dinosaurs that ever walked the earth. It is the long-necked sauropods. Sauropod is the name of the family. Sauropods came in all different shapes and sizes. Of all of the sauropods, the biggest was probably Argentinosaurus. Look at the size of the person standing in front of Argentinosaurus. Look, hey, Henry, that's a good one. That's Brachiosaurus, I think. That's very good. They got three school buses. Tell me, say that again, Shane. It's as big as three school buses. Good boy. You are correct, buddy. Nicely done. Very good, Shane. Yes, Mr. Gardner. Well, those sources like like the Argentinosaurus and 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 the Brachiosaurus. Uh huh. Well, those are probably the most tons. Oh yeah. Well, you want to see how much Argentinosaurus weighed? He weighed as much as 33 elephants. Argentinosaurus weighed as much as 33 elephants. And Shane told us how long it was. You want to see the longest dinosaur? Suprasaurus. How many buses long is it? Count the buses and tell me how many buses long is it? Five. Nicely done, you guys. You are correct. Five. Yes, Henry. It's like a dinosaur, but it's a super dinosaur. Yeah, you got that right. Its name is Suprasaurus. That dinosaur was even longer than Argentinosaurus. These also, things were gigantic. What, Henry? Can I show my family a Triceratops? Oh, wow. You've got a whole herd. You even have a Styracosaurus. I like Styracosaurus. That's really cool, really cool. Now, what do you call a dinosaur that only eats plants? Who can tell me what you call an animal that only eats plants? Does anybody know? Do you know what it is? Henry, what is an animal that only eats plants called? Herbivore. Nicely done. What do you call an animal that only eats meat? Can you tell me, Mr. Gardner? Herbivore. Carnivore, at a boy. What do you call an animal that eats plants and meat? Ooh, this is hard, Henry. Omnivore. Nicely done. Were there omnivore dinosaurs? Yes, there were. Good job. Let's look at one. Its name is Therizinosaurus. Some people think it's a carnivore. I think it was, I mean, some people think it's an omnivore. Some think it's a carnivore, some think it's a herbivore. I believe it's an omnivore. Yes, Mr. Gardner. It has some of the longest claws and one of the longest claws on dinosaurs on Earth. You got that right. You want to see how big the claws really are? 
three feet. Huh. Take a look at this. Are you ready? This is the biggest claw that was ever found. Look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Not that. <laughs> this. Look at the size of its fingernail. How'd you like a haircut with that? How'd you like somebody to pick your nose with that? Here you go. These fingernails are giant because this dinosaur is giant. It is hard to believe that its claws are that big, but it was. All right, now it's time to talk about theropods. Theropod is the name we give all meat-eating dinosaurs. There's one. Good job, Henry's sister. You had a theropod. Yes, Mr. Gardner. Theropods have three-toed feet. Nicely done. You are correct. And they came in all sizes. Here's a little theropod. <laughs> That's not a baby. That's full grown. Oh, look at its sharp little teeth. True. Yeah. This it's is as big true. as... Sure it is. This is as big as this dinosaur gets. This dinosaur is an Eoraptor. Eoraptor is tiny, but he still has sharp little teeth. He uses them for catching his food. And he has very big eyes, which means he might have even been able to see in the dark. Maybe he came out and hunted at night. We don't know for sure. But all I can tell you is they were little, but they were still naughty. But of all the meat eaters, raptors were the worst. Here are, there you go. Nicely, nicely done. There's another raptor. Good job, you guys. Raptors came in all different sizes. There was all different kinds of raptors, not just one or two. Look at all of them. Now, the most popular raptors are the ones called velociraptor. That's the one everybody thinks of. This is the head of a velociraptor. He's not giant like you see in the movies. There you go. There's one, Henry. Good job. He's not giant, but he's still naughty. He's still very dangerous. Yes, Henry, what would you like to say? They're small, but they're fast and they also can steal your food. You got that right. It they is small. They hunt in packs. That's right, and they hunt in packs. They look as small as your foot. That's right. Look. This is the foot of a meat-eating dinosaur. Just like Mr. Gardner said, they have three toes. Actually, you want to know something? They actually have four. One, two, three, four, but they only walk on three. Only three ever touch the ground. But here's the foot of a raptor. Look at the difference in the shape. With a raptor, its toe always points up when it walks. Raptors only walk on two toes. Yes, Mr. Gardner. That like a Dromaeosaurus, and this is a Velociraptor. That's right, that's right. Yes, Henry. They, they keep their toe up, so when they un see their prey, they jump on it and their toe hooks into their prey. Nicely it's done, that's exactly right. They use this claw to cut into their prey. Here's how it works. Two toes point down, one toe points up. This is called the slashing claw or the sickle claw or the terrible claw. And when it walks, it's walking on two toes. But when it sees its dinner, it raises up its foot, it curls down its toes and it kicks. It cuts its food with its foot. Uh, how would you like to cut your food with your foot? Uh, no way. I'm not cutting my food with my foot. So, now, raptors were the fastest, and yes, they lived in packs, and they were very dangerous. Yes, Henry? If you use your foot to eat and cut your foot, cut your feet and eat it, you, will, you might get germs and kill yourself. <laughs> you would get germs. Hey, that is a cool dinosaur, Shane. Did you paint that yourself? Hey, that's very, very, that's a good job. <clears throat> that's a good painting job. That's very good. I like that a lot. All right, when we talk about meat eaters, there's only one who is called the king of the dinosaurs. There you go. Who is it, Mr. Gardner? The T-Rex. T-Rex is correct. It is Tyrannosaurus Rex. It is as long as a school bus. Ooh, that's a good one, Shane. That's a good T-Rex. It could look through the upstairs window of a two-story house and it weighed as much as five elephants. It is the king because it's giant. Yes, Henry. Six to seven times. 
Well, it's not the biggest dinosaur meat eater. Correct. The it's not the biggest. Spinosaurus is bigger than it. Yes, Spinosaurus is longer than T. Rex, but not as powerful. They're very different dinosaurs. Yes, Mr. Gardner. And the Spinosaurus goes in the water mostly. The T. Rex mostly stands on land. Exactly. Yes, yeah, Spinosaurus is a fish eater, and uh, Tyrannosaurus rex, or it's nicknamed T. Rex, is a dinosaur eater. Hey, that's a good one, Henry. That's a good uh, Spinosaurus. Good Spinosaurus. T. Rex is giant. Let me show you guys something cool. This is the head of a little baby Tyrannosaurus rex. Isn't he cute? You want to do something really cool? You guys lean real close to the camera. Get real close to the camera. Gross. You just got kissed by a Tyrannosaurus rex. Oh, yuck. T-Rex germs. You see, Tyrannosaurus was little. But when this dinosaur grows up, it is going to be a giant. Here is a tooth from a grown-up Tyrannosaurus rex. Look at the size. Mom's tooth was bigger than baby's head. This dinosaur is so gigantic, it could bite off and swallow five hundred pounds of meat in every bite. Yes, Mr. Henry. Did you know his arms are useless? His arms are really tiny. That's a real mystery. Why does it have those tiny little arms? Well, we don't really know. He has his big jaws, maybe God made his arms small. That's exactly right. He doesn't use his arms. Hey, have you guys ever seen the jaw of a Tyrannosaurus Rex? You want to see how big one is? All right, let me see. This is only half of it. It's not the whole jaw. Hang on. Ugh. Ugh. Only half of the whole jaw, Mama. Come look. Look at the Even. size. Look at the size of those chompers. Even half. It's just that's, half. That's just half. That's exactly right. This dinosaur, I told you he's a giant. Tyrannosaurus Rex is gigantic. And you know, sometimes when you read books, they tell you that its teeth are the size of a banana. But then if you ever go to a museum and you look at them, you go, well, they're not that long. Let me explain why. All that you're really seeing in the mouth is just this much of the tooth. This is called the root. This fits up inside of the jaw. So when you see the tooth, you're only seeing part of it. Yes, with the root, it is the size of a banana. And so that's why Tyrannosaurus rex is such a dangerous dinosaur. Its teeth are huge, it's strong, it's powerful, and nobody messed with a T-Rex, except a bigger T-Rex. That's the only thing that would mess with him is a bigger T-Rex. All right, let's, ooh, here we go. Now, this is gonna be hard. All right, what would you like to say, Mr. Gardner? And a bigger T-Rex is also the Giganotosaurus. Yeah, Giganotosaurus is, is longer than T-Rex. That's exactly right. Yes, Mr. Henry. If I had a pet T-Rex, no one would mess me meat at school. What would you feed it? A cow every day? No, I would feed it all the classes. Oh, ooh, nice. You'd feed it all the other kids in the school. Oh, that would be a little crazy, don't you think, Henry? <laughs> now, we learned at the beginning that avian dinosaurs are still alive, but the terrestrial dinosaurs are not. So here is your question. Why did the terrestrial dinosaurs die? How come they died? Henry, why do you think? I think because of a meteor. Nicely done, and I think you are correct. It was a meteor. A giant rock from space came down and hit the earth. It came flying in so fast, it was on fire. It made dinosaurs, the terrestrial dinosaurs, it killed them all. It didn't kill the crocodiles or the birds or the bugs or the lizards. We don't know why. We do know a lot of volcanoes erupted during that time. Yes, Henry. Where did the meteors hit? God. It hit in near South America, at a kind of near Mexico, in a place called the Yucatan Peninsula. The Yucatan. I think I read a book 
Did you? Right. It made a huge crater. Yeah, it did. It made a huge crater. That's exactly right. Well, let me tell you something. You know, young people ask me all the time, how could a rock from space cause that much damage? You want to know why? Because it was a big rock. It was a rock the size of a mountain. It was a rock that was bigger than Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas combined. That meteor was so gigantic. When it struck the earth, it changed the weather all over the planet. It changed the weather completely. This gigantic thing was the size of a mountain. Yes, Henry. It changed the weather all over the world, like the whole world? The whole world. The whole world got super, super hot. Wow. A we meteor the size of a mountain changes the whole world. Yeah, the whole world. Yes, Mr. Gardner. It's because the ground and the rock hit the ground. Atta if boy. it dug so deep, then underground would be so hot, and the underground would come all over the earth. It's exactly what happened, Atta boy. It made so much dust go up into the air that the whole planet was covered in darkness. It was like nighttime all over the world. The sun couldn't shine through. And it stayed like that for maybe a week or even two weeks. So all of the plants began to die because they need sunlight to live. So the plant-eating dinosaurs died, and then the meat eaters had nothing to eat. So that's kind of what we think happens. Yes, Henry. Um, I think when the meteor hit, it made a deep hole that it let all the hot gas escape and made all the things die. At a boy, and that's something else. That's right. The gases that went up into the atmosphere were poisonous. They caused a lot of animals to die. Now, again, not every single animal died. Birds, bugs, mosquitoes, cockroaches, fish, sharks. Uh, what else? Um, uh, lizards, snakes, turtles, frogs. All of those animals were living with the dinosaurs. Whatever killed the, the terrestrial dinosaurs didn't kill those other animals, and we don't really understand why. We just don't understand why. We don't know why it didn't kill everything. Whatever the case was, it was pretty amazing. At least we know dinosaurs used to live, and that makes it very exciting. All right. Questions. Who's got a question? Yes, Henry. At least we're alive. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, at least we survived, or at least we're here. That's all that matters, right? Exactly. All right, who else has a question? Anybody else have a question? Yes, Shane. If the rock hit Earth, why didn't Earth crash when we're here? Oh, that's very good. Well, it was a big rock, Shane. But it wasn't too big. The earth is still gigantically bigger. So the rock kind of hit the earth and went, and the earth went, ow, watch it, buddy. It hurt. But the earth didn't, nothing, the, the earth didn't change. It just kind of got socked in the arm a little bit. So the, the, it wasn't enough to break the earth. It wasn't enough to kill all the animals and plants in the world, just some of them. All right, anybody else have a question? All right, you guys, I hope you learned something interesting. The most thing I want you to remember is that there were two types of dinosaurs, avian dinosaurs and terrestrial dinosaurs. The terrestrial dinosaurs died, but the avian dinosaurs are still with us today. And that, my little friends, is your lesson. I hope uh, I'm not sure if the Keller, Keller Public Library is open or not, but if not, you can go to their website and learn all the things that they're doing. Yes, Henry, what do you want to say, buddy? Is what type of fossil is that behind you? That thing is a fish. That's a fish? That's the head of a giant fish called Zephactinus. Yes. And you want to know something cool about that fish? <laughs> That fish used to live in Keller, Texas. And it shows that the uh, Keller Public Library is open. 
and you guys are celebrating dinosaurs. So you absolutely have to go in. They're celebrating dinosaurs all month. I want you to check out books on dinosaurs. I want you to become a dinosaur expert. You make sure and go. One more question, Mr. Gardner. What would you like to say, sir? I live in Keller, Texas. Well, I kind of figured you did. So please, everybody, go by the library. Make sure to say hello to Miss Dunn. And thank you, Miss Dunn, for inviting me. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you learned something new. And remember, dinosaurs are birds. Thank you, guys. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye, you guys. We just came from the library. Nice. Good job. See you guys. Bye, everybody.